if you were ready. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening. I would like to call this City Council study session on uh, November 10th, 2020 to order. Uh, going to turn the meeting over to Justin Combs, Director of Parks and Facilities, and he's going to lead us through. Good evening, um, I'm Justin Combs, Director of Parks and Facilities. Um, so tonight, um, the topic really is, uh, what do we do with the old water slide site at Fun Valley? Um, really just looking for some direction um, tonight. We've got three presenters um, tonight to, to throw out some ideas of possible agreements we could work out um, uh, with folks who wanna um, help develop the site. So I'm gonna go through the site just real quick. Um, Site's 13.4 acres, as you can see, highlighted in blue. Um, this graphic, I think, is a little misleading because um, we do actually own um, the rest of this corner over here. That lagoon is part of our property. Not sure why that boundary line is off a little bit. Um, but that is the, the site. So kind of an odd-shaped um, triangle. A couple things to point out. The lagoons are, are functioning, um, so we do have... Um, water from Fun Valley as well as the Nickerson administrative building. I think there's a few residents that go into this lagoon. Um, and then there is a permanent access agreement on this road way here. So whatever we do, we have to honor that agreement because there is private property uh, beyond um, that has some, has, um, relies on that as access. Um, another issue we'll kind of discuss tonight is the water access or the river access point. This is the current um, river access point along 4th Street. Um, started right here, and then as this area has kind of eroded, um, it's just kind of continuing to grow. It's, it's really rough. Sometimes if you have a you have a four-wheel drive truck, you can make that uh, drive down here. But this is kind of the current condition. This is what we're hoping to improve um, through the development of the site is to get a, 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 a true um, river access point. So. Justin, let me jump in. Is that yeah. something that would develop and occur under the grant that is being considered? Yeah, that's right one now of, with the city. That's one of the options we're okay. going to talk about tonight. Yeah, having nothing to do with the other private interest. Correct. Is my understanding. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's that. That's one potential. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that as we, as we kind of after we listen to the three presentations, um, then I've got some ideas I want to present as well. Um, so this is kind of what I'm hoping tonight will look like. Um, Kind of where we're at now is this introduction and a site overview. Uh, and then I have three presentations lined up from groups who have um, shown interest in this site. Uh, first off will be Kansas Single Track Society, uh, then Snack Farms, and then Art Canoe. Um, after each presentation, I do want to allow a few minutes for, for questions from council. Um, and then I'd like to have a few uh, moments after the presentations to throw out a couple ideas. Um, then after that, um, maybe some public and open comments. I know we do have several interested parties in the crowd. Um, we've got representatives from um, Kansas Wildlife and Parks and others who are very interested in the site. So um, hopefully they may have some, some insight on this. And then ultimately then leading to some, hopefully some good discussion and some direction for me as how we can, can move this site forward and develop this site. Um, we're not going to walk, walk out of today with a you know, bullet points for a, a license agreement or a, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding. But what I'm hoping is that <coughs> I get some direction on kind of how to proceed, which group to work with, what direction do we want to go, so at a later meeting I can bring a formal agreement for for this site. Um, it's kind of what I'm hopeful we'll walk away today from. So, so with that, are there any questions before we dive right into these um, presentations? Um, I do ask, I know we have several people on the phone, um, I do ask that uh, just try to keep your phones muted so we don't have any background noise. There will be opportunities for public comment. Um, so council, as you're discussing things, please don't forget we have folks on the phone and we can uh, ask them for comments <coughs> as well. So. All right, any questions at this point? 
All right. Um, so first up, um, the Kansas Single Track Society. Um, we do have one representative, uh, Ethan Ward, is a local Hutch resident, as well as uh, several folks on the phone, or two folks on the phone. Um, Andy, can you please unmute your phone and introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Andy Cram, and I am a board member for Kansas Single Track Society. I've been involved for about eight years right now. And uh, our, our president might have called in. Uh, John Rankin, are you on the phone? Not sure if he did. Well, regardless, um, are the slides showing? Yes. Okay, well, um, so uh, we... Andy? Yes, Andy, I, I am on the phone. It took me a moment to get his uh, phone unmuted, but yes, I'm here. There you are. Okay. And so, John, then you're sure would be a part of this. Yeah. 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 Very, very exciting opportunity here. Um, so, Kansas Single Track Society, if we want to jump into the second slide here, we'll, we'll just get going. Um, Kansas Single Track Society is a group of individuals and uh, volunteers in the Wichita, Kansas area who build and maintain what we call single track mountain bike trails. And so we, we do that in South Central Kansas, and we provide anywhere from beginner to technical, um, say complicated, natural trails for mountain biking, walk, hiking, walking, trail running, dog walking or whatever outdoor recreation to get people outdoors. Um, what we do on the next slide is uh, KSS is dedicated to protecting and enhancing single track opportunities by providing enjoyable recreation experiences for, for social events in the local community to get outdoors, to educate and encourage trail riding and running. We, uh, we, promote, we promote responsible single track use and ethical behavior among the community. So people are, are learning to be courteous to other users on the trail because usually we, we have multi-use trails in, in uh, public settings. Uh, we work with land, local land managers, municipalities, landowners to improve trails and facilities. And we work with other groups to ensure that the, the trail experience is good for all users you know we have we've worked with trail runners we we have a radio control car group in, in wichita at one of our trails so uh, there's there's a wide <coughs> variety of users that, that occur on our trail and we want to increase the diversity of, of people of of the users of single track we want we want families we want all all users from the community to enjoy getting outdoors so in the next slide you can see a picture of one of our trails. Um, this is this is kind of a typical look on the, on on our trails. Is you'll have about a foot wide dirt surface, and then we mow along the sides of them to to give about a six foot wide corridor where you can ride through this. So if you go down to the next slide. Um, our trails are curvy. Our trails are winding through the woods. Sometimes our trails are. Um, so yeah, here if you go to the next slide, we're, we're in the woods in a in a section where you're going out along a tree row and you're coming back along a tree row. So with with some with some corridors, we can fit a couple of pieces of trail in one space. And then um, if you go to the next slide, there's a lot of a lot of times where we have to deal with erosion or water that will be moving through the area so we would put in some type of bridge or, or water mitigation uh, means to get over that without having to walk through the mud or ride through the mud uh, the next slide shows you out in the field there are occasions where sometimes our trails go through a field and it can grow up pretty pretty tall grass along all of that so you know and in some instances we have to uh, mow around some pretty heavy spots in in a field area but sometimes you know uh, that's we, we found ways to do that and, and make it work out in the next slide you'll see uh, badger creek this is uh, out by fall fall river about an hour and a half east of Utah. <laughs> um, we have a, a big uh, we have about eight miles of 
um, wooded trail out there that we that we maintain. And uh, the next slide for that shows the oak forest that you ride <coughs> through and just how beautiful it is in the fall. So on slide 11, it indicates the trails that we support. And so, so we have four trails that we are currently maintaining in Arc City, Fall, Fall River, and Wichita and Augusta. And so we work with the Corps of Engineers, we work with city municipalities, and, um, act and actually uh, private, private uh, individuals at, for, for the, the uh, Methodist Church. At, in Arc City for, for use of their property to build upon and to maintain their trails. Uh, the next slide shows Air Capital Memorial Single Track Trail, which is a two mile trail that is in West Wichita. And it, was, it, it had an explosion of use when the pandemic occurred this, this spring. We, we had so many people get out and explore and find our trail, which was so exciting. Um, had lots of families that were, that were riding, <coughs> hundreds and hundreds of people that had never ever experienced nature like this and, and getting out onto our trails. So, you know, even with just a small two mile trail there, a lot of people were getting real good use out of it. The next map shows Badger Creek Trail at Fall River, we have two separated trails that are about four miles long, and you can see that they they are on a on the sides of the sides of a hill. So you're know, winding around and, and climbing. You can see the elevation change. Uh, the next the next map shows Camp Horizon, and the elevation change down at the bottom of there shows that you know you're going down, 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 down to the Arkansas River, and then you have a big climb back up out of it. So. We have, we have some really neat opportunities to get outdoors for people. And, and uh, so on the next slide, to get to the point of what we are here tonight for is um, the Hutchinson Park Single Track Trails Improvement. Um, KFS requests permission to improve the property over by Sun Valley, where the water slides were, by building single track trails for mountain biking, hiking, and trail running purposes. And so on the next slide, it shows the location. I think everybody's familiar with where the location is. So we can go down to <coughs> the next one, which is the property line. I think that you just showed that, but I didn't get to see it. And then on slide 18, um, this would be our proposal for how the trail build for phase one would occur. Um, originally, when we looked at this in, the, in December of 2000, 18, we did a site survey on what what was what we could build out there. What what were the possibilities? And we felt that the first implementation of it should be at the level of where we don't we don't want to touch the hill. We don't we don't know for sure what we want to do with the hill. So to get to get it started, we felt that we should put in a trail as you can see right there in the wooded area to the east of the hill and to get that burned in to where to where people ride on that they get used to that um, we, we make sure that we like the way that it flows and then we can we can assess what the next step would be so the first the first build is in the woods and it goes around the base of the hill and that would provide a 0.85 mile ride the next slide shows the elevation of the of the hill, <coughs> and just to restate that we would not um, we we would take our time to assess what needs to be done with the hill with with the existing slide the the possible um, you know structure damage <coughs> the uh, I, it, it seems it seems semi dangerous as is. So we would want to make sure that anything that we would do with that area would, would be safe for all users. Uh, the next slide indicates what we will provide. The initial layout and an improved trail build is what we would assist with the local, the local riders in the Hutchinson area. Uh, we, would, we would help them learn how to build the trail. 
Um, trail in a Box is provided by, by the Kansas Trail Council, and KFS is an affiliate member of Kansas Trail Council, so we will organize the delivery of an equipment trailer, which will be parked on site for the for the builders to use. It has equipment in there to build trails for cutting cutting through the woods and and helping them to to implement <coughs> that trail. Uh, we will help with ongoing maintenance to the trail. Uh, we have we have the means of obtaining and spraying um, some herbicide for poison ivy control, and we would help with trail specific signage, which would indicate where you would start, where the trailhead is, where you go, what the direction is. Some of some of our trails, most of our trails are directional, so we 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 mitigate the instances of people riding and mm -hmm. interacting with pedestrians by telling the riders to go one direction and the hikers to go the other direction. So when you come together, you see each other. It's very important that everyone knows where everyone else is on the trail. And we would also promote the trail through, through different online means. Um, we, have, we have some trail map apps that are, are specific to our organization, NTD Project and Hiking Project. They were, they're part of EMBA, the International Mountain Biking Association. And, uh, you know, just on, on social media and then mm -hmm. on any of our trail guides that we produce. Um, what the host would provide as uh, the city, the, park, the Parks Department, um, the host would provide liability for riders, road access, for the parking lot, and uh, and you, it looks like you, you could use the existing concrete lots for parking in there if if they were marked appropriately. Um, any park specific signage that would go outside of the park, um, anything like that, you guys would take care of. Trash collection, site policing, rule enforcement, and mowing and maintaining anything in, that's not trail related. Um, the next few slides go through the estimated value to the city that we would do as in-kind volunteer services for, for the proposal. And so at a glance, the estimated value that we believe this would bring to the city is $3,482. That breakdown is done in the next couple of slides by indicating what we tend to estimate our design cost would be per mile. And then on the next slide for the construction of, of the build, um, that would be $1,800 based on, um, we, we, we monitor our volunteer base very, very closely to, to keep track of how many volunteer hours go into different builds. And when we built the north side of Santa Fe Lake, you can see that four miles of that took about 475 man hours. So we kind of base our our builds off of off of that that knowledge. Um, slide 25 has yearly maintenance, where KSS would agree to help the Hutchinson Mountain Bike Community keep the trails mowed and trimmed. And uh, I'm sure that they will want to do some small improvements as, as they learn about their trail. And trails, trails evolve over time. They will be one way in the beginning, and, and you'll decide that this thing needs to change, and we want to go over here just a little bit. And, and just the small improvements make the ride so much better. So those types of improvements are, are done on work days. And so the, the about $832 is what it comes out to be with yearly maintenance. The final slides in here, we believe the community impact for, for this opportunity is that Hutchinson mountain bikers have to travel to Wichita or further to experience trail riding. And by developing this trail, we retain these riders in the local community as well as bring in more riders to experience this this sport, and so they expect for that. Uh, we expect that the local community of mountain bikers will will grow 
quickly, and it includes all ages. Mm -hmm. um, we have riders that are, we have children riders, and we have people in their 70s that ride mountain biking in our organization. So um, it, it's a great opportunity to get outdoors and be outside for all year round. And on the last slide, um, riders from the Hutchinson community right now are working to create a local NICA team, which is the National Interscholastic Cycling Association. And this, this team in Hutchinson offers the, the opportunity for children to get outdoors and experience a racing type environment um, and, and, and gives them a, a way to, to experience riding in a different way than, than they probably ever have. Um, part of part of that part of part of the experience that they get with with NICA is taking care of trails so those kids would also be involved in maintenance and and activities for the trail so it's it's a win-win for for those maintaining and for the youngsters that are learning about being outdoors because it's not always just about my, mountain biking just being outdoors is, in in the woods is wonderful and we i i love being out there even not on a mountain bike so um that's what we've got for our presentation for what we think could be done with this uh with this space thank you for your time thank you, you have any questions yeah are you a registered nonprofit? we are okay Canada Single Track Society, is, we, we have a nonprofit status prior to joining EMBA. EMBA is the International Mountain Biking Association. Okay. And we, we had that prior to that in 2000, 2015, but when we joined, we went underneath EMBA's okay. nonprofit okay. uh, number. Okay. A couple Thank of questions, uh, just for clarification. Um, is it your all's intention that you want to lease this uh, property on phase one, or do you want to acquire it from the city of Hutchinson, or what do you view, uh, you reviewed your, your overview, or do you view yourself as the developer? Uh, exactly what are your intentions? We do not lease property on any of the spaces that we currently have developed. These spaces with the Wichita Parks Department are provided have been provided to us for for development, and we we are not looking to own or you, to do anything other than help you build a trail on that on that in that space. Okay. Would you be required to leverage that property under ownership, or would there be an allowance for a clawback feature? Uh, if at some future point in time you decided not to have ownership or something happened to the people of ownership I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry there was a big ding in the middle of your sentence yeah what, what was that yeah w would you be uh, we're getting a lot of dings I'm sorry about that Let's try it again would you be leveraging that property later on uh, with a loan feature or loan instrument or would there be a provision that would allow the city to have a clawback feature in future years if the operation went defunct, it's not. They're not owning it. I'm not familiar with, with, with your question. Um, I'm, um, I'm you don't want to own it. In other words, trying to ask. We 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 just developed the trail. We're not trying to own oh, okay. it or, yeah. or Thank you. anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I misunderstood. I was gonna. You know, we don't, uh, Ms. John Rankin, oh. and we don't we don't charge for use of the trails in any way. Um, it's it's something we do for the area, um, for the citizens of the area. Uh, of course, we do it because we enjoy it, but uh, but we love to see everyone else enjoying it too. So whether it's the city of Wichita, whether it's the uh, city of Augusta at Santa Fe Lake, whether it's Corps of Engineers out at uh, um, out of Fall River or Camp Horizon, uh, the Methodist Church camp down there at, at Arc City. They like having our trails there because it's something for the people in that area to do. Um, it's a better use of their land. It's access out to that. At Fall River, hunters use our trails to go out uh, during hunting season. 
um, it's just a, a great use of the land and, and a great way for people to get out and enjoy nature. So, so there's never been a financial consideration in any area that we've done this before. We don't expect there to be here either. Rather, this is a benefit for the city of Hutchinson. I was just going to chime yeah. in real quick. So from my understanding, basically, you're just going to, that's why the liability is still on the city, because it's right. city land. Right. Because we don't, we still, we still, still have <clears throat> to the expenses of maintaining the whole of it, except for that small, except for the portion a couple feet outside the trail. And so you're just developing the trails, maintaining the, the trails, but the, the liability of the bikers are still on yeah. the city because the city uh, still owns the land. So, right. For instance, in Wichita and, and Augusta, those are parklands. It's, mm -hmm. it's part of the park system. So it falls under any other liability that the parks would have. Um, is, there, is there any other sites that would work in Hutchinson? For you guys, because my only thing is, it is a river access point. So, have you guys scouted any other locations that would work better? Um, sorry, someone's chair is creaking, but I, I think that the the access to the river, um, I don't think that I don't think people are going to be trying to access the river through the woods. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't so, think that there will be a conflict with what we are trying to develop in the woods and wherever the... Okay, that, that was another question I had on here. I said, canoe area can they be. collaborate with other private entities interested in the site? So you'd be like a collaborative if there was any other presentation that could coexist with that too that also utilized the river access? Is that what you're saying, if that was possible? I would think so. Okay. And then yeah, I had one, I had um, another I mean, question. Can, oh, sorry. We can talk about uh, one of the ones we were looking at in Wichita is already a canoe launch. Yeah. So there'd be nothing, no conflict with having a canoe launch and a single track trail, I okay. don't think, in the same area. We just need to define the roadway so that uh, people with kayaks, canoes can ride over to where they want to do their launch. Uh, you had on there uh, as point. Thank you, John. Oh, we, we are we are just now starting to flag a trail that is a canoe launch in, in South Wichita down near Derby. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ready to, to do that right now. Okay, I had I have one another question. Um, you had on there as promotional as your Facebook websites and uh, booklet. How often are the websites visited, and how many followers do you have on Facebook? Our, our website traffic varies. It really depends on what's going on in the community. And sometimes when people move to, to the area, they're looking for something, and that's how they find us. Most of our, most of our traffic is on Facebook, or, or we've, had, we've had some people work, work Twitter for us. Um, honestly, it's hard to keep up with all of those things because we are a volunteer base, and, and it's, it's hard to you know, keep, keep everything going. So, um, but Facebook is definitely our, our biggest driver. Okay. All right, thank you. You talked about maintenance. Um, I want to visit a minute about that. Uh, this would be city-owned property. And at what point do you provide absolute assurances as, as the developer to, to maintain that site entirely, or uh, is some of this left to the city of Hutchinson and our parks department? That's what, we, that's what I tried to show in slide 20 and slide 21. What we provide, what you provide, what the host provides. Um, mm -hmm. the, the mowing and maintenance, so in slide 21, the mowing and maintenance of areas of the park not associated with trail maintenance would be the park department's responsibility. We basically, anything just a couple of feet off the trail, we would not be, we, we wouldn't tend to touch. So how does that work, Justin? Yes. Yeah. How does that, how does that work? Um, Differentiating the two. So it, it really would not be any additional maintenance on us. We are already doing some mowing. We mow um, up to the fence. We mow the ditch right away. We mow um, along the the, tr uh, the access road a little bit. So 
there there wouldn't be um you maybe a, a little bit of additional but not a lot because um, we are already doing some maintenance out there so uh, but but the actual trails that would be built themselves that all that maintenance would be on kss okay if that makes sense so some some so of the, the common grounds wide. maybe would be uh, would would be our responsibility but the trail so getting back in on the trails would not be anything our staff would have to do Yeah, so uh, I want to be conscious of time. Um, are there any other questions? Not right now. Great. Well, thank you for thank you for listening and, and appreciate it. Thank you. for the request for proposal for this. Um, okay. So you might have actually had a chance to read through that. I know Jade mm -hmm. actually has. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to go over sort of the basics here um, and then uh, sort, of, sort of talk about uh, the benefits that we really see for the community and why a bunch of young people from Hutchinson are already behind this. So the first thing I wanted to go over is, uh, for those of you who don't know, the, the, the big thing for Snack Farms is we see those slides as a really easy place to make a very, very, well, unique, um, a unique skate park. So one thing that has been a huge draw for our supporters is the fact that skateboarding in Hutchinson, Kansas is already pretty big. If you go down to your local skate park on any given day, as a town, just a, a percentage of your population that's actually there, young people, it definitely rivals, if not exceeds, the number of people. It's a percentage of the population that you would see at a Wichita skate park, a Kansas City skate park, or anything like that. Skateboarding is pretty popular in this town. And part of it is because back in the day it was illegal. Uh, kids, I think, camped out on the mayor's lawn or skated his driveway until they got their way for that skate park. Um, there's a place called Skate Farm out in the country that's done an excellent job of building wooden ramps, safe, safe enough, wooden ramps, that kids can go and skate. And they're already doing an active farm uh, with an action park kind of concept and a live music venue as well. Um, and the mindset of the kids that like to skateboard, just so you understand, I assume it's probably similar with a lot of BMX kids too, um, but looking at those old slides, I've at least, or telling people about this and trying to get them on board, I've heard way too many kids say, oh dude, if I could get in there, I'd skate it. And I'm like, that's why it has a lock on the gate. So the other thing is the impacts for the city, uh, liability and land use, right? So it, it, we already have a skate park. The liability for a skate park's already taken, right? Um, and then in terms of the land use itself, the ability to skateboard on that property would be a huge draw. If you want to talk about something that would actually get people to come from Kansas City, Denver, something like that, that's how far you currently have to go to skate what's called a snake run. And I'll get a little bit more into this as we go, but I wanted to present this basic context for everything that we're doing because we have lots of popular support and I feel like their work long before I even got really involved with this community, it, it definitely supersedes what I've done because there's a reason why this town is a skate park and there's so many kids that skateboard and so many people have started following our Facebook page for this particular endeavor. So Fun Valley, it's got historic significance. One thing we wanna do is we wanna keep that historic significance um, we've worked with Mark to clean up the property, not only around his house, uh, but also to keep it clean when we're out there scouting it and trying to understand better how that land works. I've probably personally taken about 30 trips out there, um, and I know that land like the back of my hand because I don't think that it's possible to utilize it, as the RFP stated, utilize all aspects of it without really knowing the land. And so there's thousands of fond memories, and I actually started a secondary Facebook page that is just remembering the Fun Valley Water Park, and the amount of people well out of the demographic that I tried to get support for Snack Farm 
have come out of the woodwork and said, I remember that, posted pictures, things of this nature, to the point that it's actually impressed me how many people believe in the historic preservation of the site and keeping it a place for young people to have fun. But in the long run, the closure of the water park due to over drilling the wells and salinating the pumps that powered those slides, it's gonna be impossible to make this a water park again. And on the other hand, city gets the liability for all this mowing, this huge mound full of things that anybody with a bicycle or a skateboard could easily break their arm on and have a lawsuit against the city if the gate was left open. And as well, has ended up subsidizing softball off, off of just receiving this property, right? And that's also part of, I believe, uh, we've talked about it before, Justin, the issue with the lagoons that you see on that one side of the property is that the city is using those for Fun Valley proper across the road. And also, I, I believe, Mark, is there private property north of the park that flows into the lagoons? Oh, used to years ago when it was the water, when it was the recreation area. Okay, there so. There were RV dumps and stuff clear up on the north end. That's right. Okay, so it's all septic up north of that, right? It's all runs okay. to the sewer lagoon. Yeah, so there's no private property, I guess, that's running to that. It's just the baseball diamonds. But the, the amount of traffic that I've seen out there in the last summer, I would say that that's a lot of sewage. So, <laughs> moving on to the next thing. Um, <laughs> sorry for the, for the uh, Star Wars reference, pretty blatant. Um, the big goals here is we want to run and maintain a family-friendly, active lifestyle, inducing uh, really a family farm or hobby farm style of retreat that people can not only like, because I mean, a lot of people are my age, I'm 35, okay? So you got a lot of people that still come out to skate farm, for instance, want to skate. They bring their kids, and their kids can go play with chickens or ducks or something like that. It's, it's, it's a very positive model for how something like this could work. Because a lot of people that want to skateboard aren't just 16, you know, coming going through high school, right? <laughs> but some of them are 25 to 26, starting a family. And one thing that they end up consistently going to Wichita for is opportunities to skateboard something other than the park. They grew up skateboarding. This would be a big opportunity for that. Because we want to take those water slides as they are. We want to get the actual fiberglass out. Um, I've had the ability to actually think some Mark. I've looked at the construction of those water slides on the original blueprints that were filed uh, by uh, um, Larry Brown. So I have <laughs> excellent knowledge here that we can get those removed as long as the growth around it is removed. That's part of the reason we incorporated a hobby farm aspect to this because we believe that the only way to safely denude that hill to get to it, to do any sort of development, let alone make it safe so you guys don't have a liability issue on your hands every time the gates open, the only way to be able to do it is with goats. That's about the only thing we've been able to think of, because you can get as many volunteers as you want, but that property, we, the name Snack Farm, tongue in cheek, a couple different ways. Skateboarding Nirvana of Eastern Kansas, it sounds better than Snitchek, so we decided to go with that, even though we know this is Central Kansas, but if you bisect Kansas with a line, it just barely falls east, I think. So that's one thing, but the other joke was that, hey, we're making snake runs, and then the third joke was that this property is obscenely, I'm, and when I say obscenely, I mean I've seen more poisonous snakes out there than I have in the entire 15 years I've lived in Kansas. So there's a lot of snakes out there. And quite frankly, putting volunteers in that situation could, yeah, it could be hazardous. So we really want to try and utilize volunteers as little as possible in the brush until we get it down, until we can get the number of snakes kind of going down as well. And then we also want to make sure that whatever we do would provide continued access to Fop Pond way in the back for terminal or police's land. That's very important to our law enforcement, uh, according to what they've told me and what Mark's told me. So it, it's important to us uh, at Snake Farm, we all want to make sure that that access is continued because people own private land back there. Or the police need to get back there for anything we, uh, for terminal or police. We want to make sure they can do it. And the last thing we want to make sure to do, oh, excuse me, I skipped one bullet here. We want to eventually, over a five-year period, operate a farm-to-table operation. So uh, one board member is actually a butcher um, and manages the skate farm. It's really not that far off for us, as he's and others in our organization have actually worked in a lot of food services. But with access to this space, we don't just want to do the one thing, leave the waste for someone else to pick up. We want to make the entire thing its own ecosystem of of, of self-actualization and volunteer opportunities for young adults and, and young people in general. Um, and providing those educational opportunities to community shareholders is another. And we'll kind of get into that here in the next slide. So 
The big thing that I want to go over is we've kind of separated this up. We have to respect the, the, the ingress, egress uh, there for everybody else. And we also have to find a way to make sure that throughout the development process that the water slides themselves in the mound is somehow segregated from the public river access. We want to be open within like three to six months of the overall project. So we don't want to waste any time on river access because that was one thing the city said in their recreation master plan they absolutely needed to have was river access and action sports opportunities for kids and young adults. So if, uh, is it easier for me to motion with the mouse? Can people see what's, okay, cool. So this right here, we, we don't have any plans for that. We want to respect that. We don't have any plans for the lagoon access either because technically the water access is lagoon service access. And it's really so eroded and it's so bad, like uh, I believe Justin said, you can't get down there without a four by four. It's not really safe. On the other hand, our canoe has been driving up into here and doing the river access in here. Um, so right now on, on any given warm day, you will be able to see the our canoe bus already through an agreement with Mark here, his kind self. Driving up that road in a big old bus barreling down it with a trailer full of canoes or kayaks or whatnot. And it's a great sight because you got young people getting out there and actually enjoying this land the city owns and not just, I mean, even if they're only enjoying the bank, you know, they at least get to drive through there. It's a very beautiful area for <coughs> every animal you can find. Even on the first time we had the entire uh, board of directors out there, we had a bald eagle fly over our head. You can't make this stuff up. It's gorgeous. But we decided that the only way this would work and to be able to provide river access, we thought at first, maybe we could put it down here. And we talked to Justin and did a second iteration of our proposal and sent it back and everything because he made a really good point that we need to actually get it up in here further. This is a wash area, driving down into it. This, this could potentially flood back, be horrible for a river access. Um, this right here, it's gonna erode fast. As Mark can attest, the erosion north of this property is such that uh, it, it, there's, there's, there's some serious potential loss there. And so we want to avoid that bend right there because it's going to take the brunt of the pressure of the river and the brunt of the weathering that, or erosion that the, the water is going to do. On the other hand, this little area labeled 1 is where we planned our public river access. If we can get this road that you see here working again, just enough to get down into there, that would be one of the best potential spots to have river access. Because based on, based on the terrain, the erosion, and the shifting of that sandbar, that sandbar is gonna provide a nice break that'll prevent you know, little things like benches or other stuff like that that people can sit at before they pull out or, or put in, right? That, that kind of stuff will not get washed away in a flood. If you try to do it down here, as you've noticed, the bottom of our public river access there at four it gets didn't go out. point you're not the mouse is not showing up okay excuse me so down here erosion <coughs> yeah. is horrific up here erosion is really bad this sandbar is evidence that the erosion is not that bad and i've been out on it it's it's wicked awesome actually but sure. most important oh, <laughs> yeah, give, give the oh yeah the oh awesome thing. okay so so this is the only really suitable area for river access that i've been able to identify okay. and that's someone I've put in a 14 foot John boat over here and taken it down to Yoder. I like to boat. Um, and I also like to use trails. I don't mountain bike. I actually train two dogs to pull me on an off-road skateboard, but I've been back in these woods a little bit just to check it out. And yeah, it's a beautiful place here on the Eastern side of the road. It's nice and wooded and there's plenty of good features already there to put in trails and all the trails that I saw make me in KSS's presentation, make me want to hit them up. Wish that I had sooner and potentially get them involved because we want to lean on community groups that are in that have specific affinities for instance like mountain biking and we want them to have opportunities mm -hmm. to come out and put that input in and really do exactly what craig was talking about the big thing is we want to make sure that we keep that separate from danger zone over here because right now if somebody with a mountain bike drove or rode by that um, and decided hey i'm going to try and get up one of those slides you've got a serious liability issue on your hands if we're okay in it. So that's kind of where I thought to myself, you know, if we're actually gonna do something to try and get the brush down off the hill, uh, do it safely using livestock, something like that, the main thing would be in the meantime, we would, we would not probably want bikers going around in there or anything like that. We wanna keep the BMX trails over here. 
All we really have planned is the, the skateboarding area, lower park down here on the concrete flat. It's not really gonna be great for parking or anything right now. It's gonna need some remediation just to be skateboarded on. It's got metal uh, rebar and stuff sticking up out of the concrete in places that would pop tires, just FYI, if you're ever driving out there. Um, and over here, some camping. Um, we'd plan to do a maintenance building that could double as a covered venue in the short term, uh, as well as long term, uh, looking at pavilion and showers potentially over here so that people who might go camping or anything like that in this property potentially go swimming. It is very salty. You will come out with a little crust on yourself. You're going to want to shower just like the ocean. So that's, the, that's our, our kind of big picture of this area. And this space uh, uh, right over here, we were hoping to maybe do some do some stuff where we could keep the goats uh, and that way we'd be able to take them out and put them in the right places. The only big thing that we really need from the city to change is, I mean, you could even get rid of this fence over here if you wanted, but we'd need this fence all the way up to this blue line here and then probably back down this way if you want to keep people out of this, but at least fence over to here so people can't drive up. So moving this gate up to here moving some of this fence, maybe putting in some more over here, would actually provide everything you'd need to keep, to, to segregate the liability of these unfinished snake runs, right? Or I guess decrepit water slide, from the utility, the BMX trails, and the river access. Uh-oh, I'm still stuck on laser. Okay, I got it. Okay, so, first phase we call scouting the line. And I decided to purposefully make allusions to skateboarding. Scouting the line is where you look at what's possible on a given set of ramps or a skate park and you decide what you're gonna try. So we wanna do some rehabilitation, put in some gardens, get some basic little stuff going in. Well, we also do some reclamation and get the grazing going with the goats. And then we wanna do some restoration, which is going to be actually getting in there and I mean, there's everything from torn up wiring that people have stolen <clears throat> to knocked over light posts to things like that, let alone the slides themselves. But we want to get all that off the property and it's proximity to the dump, especially with a little bit of, a little bit of community help or even just hooking up a trailer mine truck. We could get a lot of stuff done really fast with even 10 people. The other optional one that we wanted to talk about and we tried with our community was to make some sort of a deal to ensure them a launch facility out of the gate. We wanted to make sure that groups like our canoe would have the ability to work with us and even give input and provide information on how to build this river access in a way that's going to be you know, most respectful to the land and also the mixed use of the land. The other thing was low intensity poultry production and some, in, in some event it would be really easy. That's something that kids can you know, at least go feed chickens, things like that. We wanted to make sure that there was something to do to keep families and children busy if somebody wants to go out and do stuff like, you know, ride a mountain bike trail and jump over stuff or go skateboarding and jump over stuff. You can't hold your kid for that. So you gotta kinda have some, some backup plan, something to make it a whole family experience and really family friendly. The next phase we wanna drop in, which is literally where you lean over the edge of a ramp and build up some speed, like going down. So we want to do the lower park construction first, utilizing the same kind of construction techniques that we've done on our own homemade ramps and things of that nature. They're all usually built off of plans that are ordered through different companies. Um, indoor kitchens, covered outdoor dining. This would be, oh, we're talking two to three years from now. So we'd want people to be able to grill. We'd want people to be able to go eat under a pavilion. Some guest accommodations of any sort, particularly showers is a big one. No one's gonna be able to swim out there without feeling really gross on the way home. It's the, the lagoon is not the same as the river, if that makes sense. Uh, marketing and advertising uh, is something else that we wanna do. Uh, maintenance facilities, like I said, a covered shed, a pole barn of some sort would be really helpful uh, so that we could have everything we needed, tools and stuff like that out there that would otherwise have to be shipped in from other properties. Um, hosting an annual festival is another one. I was actually lucky enough to put on Doom to Skate uh, back in 2018 at Skate Farm. We got a thousand people to a farm on the outskirts of Hutchinson for a weekend for a festival. And it was a really great time. And things like that, that's actually, that's, that's the biggest draw is the shows to Skate Farm. And that's when a lot of people realize, hey, I can listen to a band play here on this stage attached to this ramp, and I can skate the ramp at the same time. Like, we've got plenty of people that were excited about that particular aspect of the property Skate Farm 
that we know if we cross apply to SNEC farm, it'll work just as well. And then on-site waste disposal. So we really wanna use every little bit of biomass that we can. We don't wanna be putting a lot of trash out when it comes to the slide material and things of that nature. We wanna get rid of that, but in terms of the animals, we wanna be able to reuse that stuff. So really, we, we wanna create a whole ecosystem for fun, at least in those two years. Um, and then moving on, phase three is kind of the big air, getting that speed coming out of the ramp and doing something cool. That's what skateboarding is all about. And focused educational activities for USB 308, uh, even shiitake mushrooms, black walnut grove, being able to start utilizing some, some unique food production capacity. Uh, BMX track, dog yoring. Uh, the BMX track, of course, talked about in that eastern side of the road between that and the lagoons and uh, the levee. Uh, but that BMX track's an obvious one. Dog yoring, though, is something I've, I've kind of gotten into here, and that's when they tow me on my board. Uh, if, you know, we could start giving people that experience. We would actually not only be the only, uh, we don't not be the, just be the only snake runs in about an eight hour drive radius. We'd also have the only facility for warm weather dog yoring, whether it's on a bike or a board or anything in North America. The only other places where you can do yoring in North America would be in the snow, either behind horses or dogs with skis or things that are sleds of things of that nature. So, I mean, it's not really uh, something that people do, but it would be a very unique draw and one of those things where you could put a sign up and say we're the only place in North America that does this. Next up, um, we want to make a promise to you. Um, if you check out our actual re response to the request for proposal, you'll see all our numbers. You'll see all of the details and everything in the second iteration that we worked out with Justin. Um, our big thing is we want to lease the land for like a dollar a year and do the work, create the space, build it and make people come. Uh, We've seen that happen before with lots and lots of community effort at Skate Farm. So we know we can build it and we know we can make them come. If I could get a thousand people to a festival, we can do that a few times. We can easily make people well aware that Hutchinson has a gem in the backyard. Um, but we want to make some promises to you guys and that is to be safe. We want to have loss prevention and liability mitigation built in. That's part of the reason why we want that fence. And, Part of the reason why we don't want our volunteers trampsing around in that high grass that's known for having poisonous snakes in it, or falling off the side of that really, really steep hill while they're trying to clear some brush or a tree. Um, we also want to have reduced city maintenance cost. And so we don't want you guys to be liable for mowing if we've got a small herd of goats. Um, and that's, you know, an obvious when a lot of communities are actually moving to hiring a dude with goats to trim some of their public commons. So this is, <laughs> this is a, a, an easy win for everybody. A single parcel sale, uh, like, oh, not sale, but lease, excuse me. Uh, I should fix that. A single parcel lease is the other big thing. We can utilize both sides of that road, provide the river access, work with other community groups to really make those trails great and keep the adjoining property on the other side of the road all in one parcel. So that if there is a clawback provision of any sort, or you guys want it back, or we're not meeting your expectations of any sort, you guys will still have one parcel. It won't be broken up. Because the other proposals would almost nearly have to be broken up, that we've heard of at least. Uh, as well, sustainability. That's a big popular thing right now, but it's also something that, I mean, a lot of the people at Skate Farm are kind of kind of into. A lot of people that are part of this sort of action outdoor sports community are really into. And not only just lifestyles that are sustainable for people and improving the public health, but also, you know, working with that land to uh, sort, of, sort of build it back because it's really been terrorized by someone, you know, digging up all the sand, creating a lagoon, drilling wells too deep, building this giant hill that has its own erosion problems now 30, 40 years later. Um, so we want to make sure that soil and water, water quality are really respected too. Um, and then he's increased tourism. That's something we can definitely do. We've got people who have joined our Facebook page, for instance, Sarah, you're asking about people's social media activity. We've had people joining the Facebook page from all around Kansas and neighboring states. So we definitely believe it would be a draw. But safe fun is the big promise. We want to keep that liability low. We don't want to have to pay Mark over here, who's on our board, and probably would end up doing our insurance policy. <laughs> we don't want to pay him an arm and a leg because we're a nonprofit. We run off donations. And 
that's we don't want our donors to have to pay for other people's bad decisions. So that's uh, that's the end of our presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd be more than willing to answer. Oh yeah. Questions. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. sir. Um, I just want to say thank you. You have a lot of good ideas. Um, my only concern is I feel like you have too many ideas. Actually, we need a few out. Um, yeah. <laughs> the proposal, yeah, the proposals. Sometimes uh, it's really, slow. really good to focus on. Like I preach this all the time mm -hmm. here. Uh, do a few things really well, then try to do a bunch of things everywhere. Now, I'm not criticizing it all in a way. I think it's great. If you could come up a way to collaborate with Art Canoe and the Trail Place and actually have all three of you guys get together and accomplish the whole thing, I, you know, my only thing is liability, right? Yeah. Like, what you're going to do is not going to be necessarily safe. I'm sure people are going to break an arm or leg. I mean, I used to skateboard, right? Like I broke my tailbone <laughs> on a, trying to do a board slide when I was younger. Okay. Respectable, respectable. All right. Happens the best. So I understand, you know, my daughter skateboards. Okay. She's um, 12 oh, now. She's in that, you know, <laughs> zone. So I understand, but so you want to, what kind of liability does the city still have if you're leasing it? Does he hold the insurance? And will we make sure that if he's leasing it, he is holding insurance at that time? Uh, that would be most likely a requirement of a lease agreement. Um, however, if somebody, whether they were leasing it or not, if, if somebody did get hurt out there, mm -hmm. everybody's going to get sued. The city's going to get sued, um, you know, Snack Farm. So it, it would, they would go after everybody. But if um, he, the key point, if so, we sorry. sold it though, if we, we sold it, liability. yeah. Um, the key point with any of these activities, any, any of these kind of adventure sport, is there's an inherent risk. Um, and courts have, have proven or, or have have basically shown that you know if you're if you're engaging in one of those activities, you understand those risks. So whether it's mountain biking, skateboarding, any of those things, and generally, unless the city or the leasing ag agency is negligent, mm -hmm. then there really is no liability. So if it, if Snake <clears throat> Farm was to build something that was just super dangerous, super negligently dangerous, then they would be liable. If if somebody goes out and is riding a mountain bike trail, crashes and breaks their arm, but the trail is built within normal standards, there's no liability there. It's an inherently risky sport. Um, so I don't want to get too hung up on on the liability issue. I mean, we have that anywhere you can ride a bike, skateboard, yeah. in any of our yeah. parts. I mean, Jim Martinez Trail, somebody... I'm sure this year somebody's broken an arm on Jim Martinez trail, um, yeah. probably. So I don't want to get too, too held up. If, if, I, if I might volunteer an answer as well, I mean, the fact that our is going back and forth in there and the gate's got to be left open basically for that period. I mean, anybody pulls up might ignore a no trespassing or keep out sign and get up mm -hmm. on top of that thing and try to do something stupid on it long before we try to make it safe. It's kind of akin to a small business owner that I talked to recently said, oh, well, I don't want my business on social media. I said, well, I mean, you don't have to yeah. have if your you're, business. If you don't have to be part of the conversation, you're not but the profit, risk is still there. Exactly. It's the same thing with, with yeah. the mound itself. If you're not a nonprofit, what are your uh, revenue avenues? Or do you have uh, supporters or we're, we're top non, donors we're to, yeah, yeah or um, donors in order to finance this endeavor to make sure that it meets those timelines? Because we wouldn't want it to just setting there for a long time over, over the, since the start of this whole process and us talking to the city about it we've actually trained one of our board members in how to file for grants and aid um, mm -hmm. i personally did the incorporation and the nonprofit declaration paperwork with the irs and quite frankly i mean we've we've kind of learned a lot in this mm -hmm. um, but we're not looking for financiers we're looking for community support um, and to and we've already got people who are wildly about this project that for instance run concrete pouring companies or, or work in, in that particular field. We've got welders, uh, welders on our board of directors. We know how to do a lot of this stuff ourselves because a lot of the people that are into this are already contracted out to your homes and businesses to do this work on them. Okay, so are, are you, are you going to charge well, people? I, for something like the, the, the snake runs, uh -huh. there would really be no way otherwise. You, you would almost have to because you're going to have to have people out there that are actually working that facility. It's kind of like a, a, a communal 
ski uh, run in, uh-huh. in certain northeastern towns. If you didn't have somebody out there to provide that liability mitigation, then it's like Justin said, you really would be negligible. But if you have somebody that's directing traffic, you have people that are watching out, preventing things like collisions and stuff like that, then it's manageable. But it would take a small working staff. Now, on the other hand, the lower skate park is just like the skate park the city operates in the way we've designed it. There's no, there's no reason why anybody would have to get charged for down there. There's no reason why anyone would need to get charged to use river access. There's no reason why anyone would need to get charged to go pet animals or feed animals mm-hmm. or go down to the BMX trails and run. And okay. that's the beauty of it. It's only the thing that would really need to be charged for. It. That's the only thing we really want to charge for. But that's the thing that's going to bring camping people site? In, out of state. Uh, for camping, I mean, that's something that we could easily work out with you guys. But really, if people are going to be out camping, it's generally better, like any state park would have, to have some sort of a fee because they're going to yeah. tear it up. And you, you want to be able to maintain that property. But our, our idea is not to profit. That's why we're a nonprofit and not just an LLC. It would have been way easier to be an LLC, way easier to get financed. Mm-hmm. But we went a different avenue because we felt that this was something the community deserved. And it's something that young people should be able to go volunteer at and then go be able to enjoy without paying an arm and a leg. Because if some LLC did this, you guarantee something like this would have the same cost as entering a wakeboard park or something like that. It'd be like 30 to $45 for a six hour session. Okay, I, yeah, I have no concept that. of what a, legi- a, a reasonable cost or fee would be. So thank you. So do you <coughs> have uh, volunteer staff or paid staff or uh, so what are your staff requirements? So far we have a seven person board, including myself, Mark, and five other people. Uh, so far we've got probably, a, yeah, I'd say a good 20 or 30 tradesmen that are actively interested in coming and volunteering and helping with this because mm-hmm. quite frankly, they just want to ride those snake runs. They've driven past them too many times going out to do siding or pour concrete in the country and ended up kind of getting an eye for them and being like, man, how do I get in there? And they've been doing that since they were 16, 17, right? So a lot, a lot of our biggest supporters are people that know they're gonna go out there and do the same thing they did to make Skate Farm big. I mean, it wasn't like overnight, you know, one of our board directors that, don't, that rents Skate Farm built that by himself. There were a bunch of people that came out, donated lumber, donated nails, and, and, and brought their tools and did the work to build those ramps. And it didn't happen overnight, and they're not in good condition because those people only did it once. They came back every six months to a year to rebuild, to resurface, and to maintain. And that's the kind of community of local Hutchinsonites that we, we've been built. There's, there's the only way to put it. I mean, these, are, these are people that, you know, you might look out on the street and you might say, uh, I might cross the other side of the street, you know. On the other hand, they're people with hearts of gold that really believe in their community and really believe in, you know, each one teach one, you know. Don't just go out and do something, you know, show some younger person how to do it. And we feel like there's ample opportunity in the process of actually developing the property to invite young people out, have workshops on how to build ramps, on how to pour mm-hmm. concrete into a ramp shape and things mm-hmm. of that nature. And I'm really proud of the people that we have on board because none of this would be possible if we didn't have that community support. Okay. Thank you. Okay. On the material side of it, you're not gonna need any money, come back to us and ask the money. It's, it's gonna take some money to build this, am I right? Well, that's the big thing. I mean, once, it, for instance, if on our timeline that we'd originally thought about, when we heard that we were the only proposal out there, we, we figured at some point we'd be talking to you guys much sooner than this. And that's why we, a, over a year ago, we trained one of our board members to be like basically director of grants and fundraising. Um, and we've got, you know, we've got a GoFundMe that's gotten some donations. I've put in some, some considerable funding for like the goat itself I bought and then the fencing for our pasture over at Skate Farm. I bought that and donated that to the actual nonprofit. But, it, you know, for the most part, what we're really waiting on is to have some sort of a relationship on paper with the city. Because at that point, a nonprofit with a community uh, basis, being a community based nonprofit, opens us up to federal and state grants and aid that are, uh, in a lot of cases, we're like looking at the numbers and we're like, this is like seven times what we need. I don't think this is for us. You know, and then we talk to somebody at that age, something like that. I say, no, no, this this would actually you'd fit the bill for this. And we're like, oh shoot, we just need to have a relationship with the city like we've been looking for for over a year, now. and then we can really start to chase down those grants. But in terms of not having a community partnership of any sort, 
that will that will take you out of the running for almost all of that. So we haven't been in a position to move on that. It's been really frustrating to some of our board members that you know we can't uh, go start soliciting that and maybe putting <laughs> some of the pieces together in case we want to do this somewhere else or can't do it on uh, you know on the on the mound. Um, but th that's the thing is we we built a, a communal place like this before. Um, we've all contributed time and effort into making it something that people want to come out to, and, and they came. You know, we built it, and they came. So that's the that's the big takeaway. Uh, our people really, really want to start working. And we've got lots of people that have said, you know, I want to donate money, but, you know, you guys haven't gotten anything done with the city, and it's been over a year since you put in your proposal, and I don't know if I can go ahead with that. You know, so we, we're hitting a lot of roadblocks in terms of our financing simply because we've hit so many roadblocks in this process, which I know had a lot to do with COVID taking over mm -hmm. you guys' agenda. It's not something that was negotiable for y'all. So it's, that's, but that answers your question. You know, there is a money aspect to it. There's going to be a money aspect to anything good and even a nonprofit. Uh, but I've worked in plenty of nonprofits over the years. That's where I learned how to do this from Sunflower Community Action to, uh, I think of another one, but, uh, I've worked for plenty of nonprofits and had a great chance to work with them. And I've definitely learned that there's untapped resources out there for community based organizations. And so that's your, what you're going to do is going to go after grants to get the money to build these things. Yeah. And also work with community members. I mean, like I said, that presentation that had older language in it actually, because that presentation was from back during the RFP <clears> process. <throat> I, I, it might have been back before you guys got on. I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. um, but it was. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we're new. So 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 really, we've we've been trying to do this for so long. You know, um, it's it's just we we really wanted to make sure that we did it right, and we've taken advantage of every little step along the way to. To get that done, and now we're just hitting the roadblock of well, if we're not if we're not moving the product for our shareholders, if we're not making this happen in real time, it's it's really hard to update your GoFundMe when nothing's happened for you guys. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. I guess that's yeah. my takeaway from this. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very I do much. want to address the R digest. the RFP issue just real quick. Charles um, brought it up several times. Um, so a year ago, we did a, a formal RFP mm -hmm. process. We did have one um, mm -hmm. response, which was Snack Farms. Um, and kind of to Sarah's original point about being so just kind of spread out, lots of ideas. Uh, you know, we worked for several months and tried to kind of um, par pare those down a little bit and kind of get a little bit more focus. Uh, I do want to commend you. Um, you know, your site plan now is much more, uh, um, you know, realistic, cleanly laid out and much more realistic than some of those original ideas. So they've done a lot of work um, in the mm -hmm. past year. Um, at the time, I don't think you had a board and you weren't a nonprofit. Oh, no. we, had, we had a board so before we put it in. You did? Okay. So, so they have done a lot of work um, in that past, uh, past year, but I do just want to make sure everybody understands they yeah. were the only one that responded yeah, to the no, RFP. I remember. Um, and we worked for several months mm -hmm. to try to come to, to an agreement that I felt comfortable enough to bring mm -hmm. to bring to council, and we just could never get there. Um, I think the work they've done in the last several months ha has really improved their proposal. So mm -hmm. um, I do just, like I said, want to make sure everybody understands they I, did I, mm -hmm. work I through that formal the, process. If, if needed, the, Sarah, the, I mean... No, no, no. Uh, Okay. The presentation he did show as far as the graph of the the map, which had the campsite, the <coughs> snake run, so the I'm bike trail, and the river access. Pizza. That's very simplified. Yeah. You know, I just mm -hmm. felt that when you start One getting more. into the <coughs> and then um, more the the restaurant and then the petting well, zoo. Like I said, older actually some of that, those that, was some, that was some older language. Yeah. To be honest, it's not that we couldn't do that. It's not that we could. It could be something After later down the line. Years, but yeah, our yeah. eventual five-year plan that you see, we did weed a lot of that out. So I apologize yeah. for some of the excess um, in there because that's something we worked on. Um, yeah. And honestly, when I heard about this, I was kind of shocked. It had been a year, and so I just pulled the first mm -hmm. PowerPoint I could, did a quick proof on it, and made yeah. sure. But mm -hmm. I want you to understand, if it came down to it, if mm -hmm. all we got was the west side of the road, we'd still be pretty stoked. That would still give us the ability to do everything we want to do. And then we know in the back of our heads that probably KSS is going to be over there across the road doing exactly what we wanted to do. We don't have a problem with that at all. As a matter of fact, that just takes more stress off our shoulders. Same thing with the river access. I mean, if our canoe really wanted to just specialize in that, 
But again, well, let's see our canoes presentation. So yeah, I guess we should give them some time. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I got your full graphic. I have one slide. Yeah, it was an awesome picture. Yeah. Did you take this? Uh, no, actually. Mm -hmm. There's our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> My one slide. Well, guys, thanks for inviting us out to be a part of this. And I know uh, in the past the RFP came up and, and we had some issues and concerns ourselves that, that were not uh, not putting us in a position where we actually responded to that RFP. And I think I sent letters to the council to that effect uh, about a year ago when you guys put that RFP out. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and, and thanks for Justin for inviting me out to, to talk to you guys a little bit today. Um, my name is Scott Brown. I am a partner and manager of Arcanoe LLC. We are a kayak, canoe, and tube rental and shuttle service located right here in Hutchinson, Kansas. Uh, our business is unique in the state. We are the only one operating at this time. Um, in 2015, at our company, company's inception, we identified the West Fork location as one of several target properties that uh, we thought could be utilized to facilitate Arcanoo's growth and unlocking its full potential. Uh, give us a permanent location, <clears throat> along with expanding our product line to include safe and secure camping for our clients, while helping them to access and experience the Arkansas River water trail that runs right next to Hutchinson. Our Kansas River Water Trail was dedicated in 2016 to stimulate economic growth and tourism opportunities for communities located along the waterway. It's estimated that in 2015, outdoor recreation expenditures topped $650 billion, uh, with $80 billion in national, state, and local revenues generated. Paddle sports are the fastest growing segment of those outdoor activities. We believe Hutchinson is uniquely uh, p positioned to fully realize the water trail's economic potential, uh, not unlike hundreds of other communities located along similar scenic trails throughout the United States. According to a 2015 publication, the economic arguments for water trails, one such rural community very similar to our own located in central Pennsylvania, a long water trail uh, estimated that over a six week period in 2015 between July and September, 3,500 paddlers visited their community that yielded an economic impact of $730,000 in direct expenditures within that community. Uh, folks spent their money on accommodations, campgrounds, uh, outfitters like ourselves, uh, grocery stores, buying food, visiting restaurants, uh, other accommodations such as hotels, uh, at a variety of retail stores. Uh, and those folks also visited local attractions such as museums, historical sites, zoos, and parks. For a community like ours, the Water Trail promises real economic impact. But having and promoting a trail through a community is not enough. Services and amenities are essential for a trail community to flourish. Uh, according to the Outdoor Industry Association, outfitters like Arcanoe are an invaluable component of this economic engine and represent 24% of all paddle sport expenditures across the United States. It's the second only to overnight accommodations in the form of camping. Uh, those, uh, that represents about 28% of those paddle sport enthusiasts spending their money uh, for the past five years, Arcanoe, we've been out here cultivating uh, Hutchinson's greatest tourism resource. Uh, our growth is palpable. Considering that in 2016 we serviced under 250 clients, uh, our first year of operation, our goal was just to uh, service enough clients so that we would have enough to make it, pay our bills through the off-season, and reopen again in 2017. This year alone, we serviced just under 2,000 clients. Those clients represented 780 tra 718 transactions, of which only one-third were generated within 30 miles of Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. Fully half are coming from points more than 60 miles away. 
104 of those transactions were generated outside of Kansas. Uh, we're making some pretty strong inroads into the panhandle of Texas, uh, Oklahoma, and lots of folks from Lincoln, Nebraska this year coming straight down uh, from up north. We, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we project that next season, under our current operating model, uh, we're going to service in excess of 3,000 clients. Um, again, half of those are going to come from distances 60 miles or more. Our goal is to complete their experience by expanding our product line to include the opportunity for safe and secure camping for those engaged in paddle sports along the water trail. Our interest is in the full, I guess, 13 acres at this point um, to be developed and operated as a campsite and a permanent home for our canoe uh, so that we can make Hutchinson an even better destination for paddle sports activities in Kansas and the surrounding area. I think we're offering an option that is real tourism uh, with a capital T with real economic impacts for our community, not just for, for our company alone. Uh, any questions? Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, speak to us a little bit about your intention on your preference, whether you want to lease the property or you want to acquire it from the city. For us, purchase. Pardon me? For us, a purchase would be. You're after the purchase. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. And give me your thinking there on the, on the purchase rather than the leasing. Well, for us, you know, looking at just your, uh, for lease, anytime you're weighing lease versus purchase options, uh, it's not a temporary location for us. It is very permanent. Uh, looking at the distressed nature of the property, the amounts of investment that it will take to bring it around to a usable uh, property for us, uh, purchase makes sense. What kind of an investment do you see there to uh, uh, I think we're estimating over five years, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 5K, 500K. Uh, we have a uh, five-year plan. Uh, that unrolls uh, progressively uh, starting year one with a very small footprint uh, and ending, culminating with uh, hookups for RVs uh, and that sort of thing, bathhouses as well, uh, shower house and, and those sorts of things. So uh, looking at adding some permanent infrastructure to the site, uh, we begin of course with, with a very small footprint um, <coughs> and with some more mobile type facilities, uh, shower houses, bath houses, things like that, uh, that are, are not permanent. Uh, Nisley, uh, the uh, Nisley mm -hmm. brothers here in town, they, they uh, rent and lease those types of- T Tell me what your facilities. last five years experience has been as far as uh, access, or the limitations that you uh, Access, we use, we use all the access points as identified by the National Trail System and Kansas Wildlife Parks and Tourism. Uh, we service every site in Reno County except for Worthington Road and the 96 Highway up on Nickerson. Uh, so we've expanded our, our offerings. We do shuttle service for folks with their own equipment and we service 28 miles of trail throughout Reno County. Uh, currently for our rentals, we service just the five mile stretch uh, between Cary Park and the 4th Street access. Mm -hmm. uh, we do drop this year, Mark McKibben has invited us up, we dropped from a uh, location up on his property um, due to the fact that the, the popularity of the sport has gotten to a, the point where we have difficulty pulling in and out with our bus at the 4th Street Bridge. We still utilize that 4th Street Bridge access point for all of our tubers. Uh, we don't feel comfortable sitting our tubes underneath the 4th Street Bridge. There's a lot of rebar and riprap down in there. Uh, that could be dangerous for a tuber. So we, we still drop our tubes from the bridge location. So in your judgment, is it essential that you acquire the property rather than, uh, than lease it? Uh, I haven't seen a lease. The, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that lease. So you at this point, we're, okay. mm -hmm. we're looking at a purchase as, as yeah. a desired outcome. And that's because of the permanent buildings he wants to put yeah, on the, mm -hmm. the, the, the investment. Just notion that we are looking for a permanent site. It's and our, our needs are a little bit different in that, you know, if, if we were just another business locating in another building, you know, that potential that we might move down the road if we find the lease agreement, you know, right. tenable or, you know, other things happen. Uh, it's just not the case for us. We're looking for specific location along the waterway uh, that would allow us to offer that, that camping experience for our clients.
What's your plans on doing on the hill there? What's the hill? Well, uh, ideally, we would like to restore the property. Um, we, the, the hill has been scraped up from the surrounding area, which creates lowlands and swamps. Uh, the site to the east of the road there where the bike trails are, are proposed, it's pretty low-lying land and, and during heavy rains, it turns into a pretty swampy area. Uh, <coughs> so, you know, ideally, we would like to, to demolish the hill. Yeah. Uh, and, and restore that property to its original form. So it would be flat and the hill yeah. would be there. You no see way. the hill as a liability. Mm. Uh, as I think everybody here this evening has seen it. So. Scott, it, help me understand better, and I may have misunderstood your presentation early on. My only concern was that your acquisition of that property would work exclusively for you to hold that property privately uh, to the inconvenience of local uh, people that want to use this same area. And I'm not sure I'm accurate in that assumption, but if you own this property, would you then preclude? There's no public access. Okay. But do no people public. There's still, uh, for the folks that live behind. So these areas currently that you propose owning are not being utilized by people that live here in town that go out with their tubes? No. Okay. No. Thank you. I don't think anybody's been on that property in decades. Mm -hmm. You've answered. I, I've, I've been floating the Arkansas River uh, for 35 years. Thank you. Uh, my my first experience, you know, all through high school, launching underneath that Four Street Bridge. So it's a Got historical it. historical access for that that part of the river. Okay. Dokie. Any other questions of Scott? Um. I'm just trying to take this all in. Um. That's why we're not making any decisions tonight, That's why people. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you basically, what, what, what kind of purchase price are you considering? Like how much? That's well, open for discussion. <clears throat> well, I'm sure we'd have to get it appraised. Sure. Yeah. Ah, uh, before any of that could even be discussed. Anything else, Scott? No, that's all. Okay. I got a question on, on your question, city manager. You mean that if you owned it, nobody else can have their own little canoe and get on uh, your access point? Is that what you say? Not through the property, no. I yeah. see. That's the, the, the whole point for camping is, is to offer those folks a secure site, which okay. means that we wouldn't be allowing just anybody to come in and access that doesn't mean they couldn't access the river no there's further a, there's down there's other locations yeah, other access points street. that are already established yeah the historical four street access is mm -hmm. there, uh, currently being used and yeah i see your vans in the summertime all the time going so you then you launch them from four street at four street right yep. and then you go pick them up right yeah, we pick them up uh we collect them on the beach just on the other side of the stromal the levee from the stromal ball diamonds there's a, a really Nice big beach right there by the railroad tracks, and you tr you put the back the boats back on the yep. canoes. They're canoes. Yep. And put the canoes back on your trailer, and you transport the people back to their cars. No, they're they're at their car. We meet them in Cary Park. They park in Cary Park. Uh -huh. uh, we load them on the bus. We drive them up to Fourth Street and drop them off, and they basically float back to their car. I got you. Um, part of me is thinking. If you had his business, which is a nonprofit developing the land, and you still had the public access, like without having the well, library. It's not access that we're interested in. It's not access. No, we're interested in the camp. Because I was thinking all those people that visit his thing would increase, because if you had access to go back and forth, you'd be picking up a lot of extra people that were already camping <coughs> there and going on the snake run and the skateboarding and the concerts. I mean, wouldn't, you, wouldn't your private business benefit from the nonprofit business? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's just what I was thinking about. I, I, I actually mm -hmm. wanted to hear from you as a adjacent property owner. Oh, I plan on speaking here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Anything <clears throat> else? Okay. Thank you, Scott, very much. Thank you. I'm thinking um, 
everyone's kind of understanding now why we're here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just because yeah. Of, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've been in communication with all three groups, and, and um, they all three are very passionate. They all three have, have very good ideas. Uh, and so I just really need some direction. Um, the other thing I want to throw out there that, that I'm hoping kind of opens up another option, um, and the city manager mentioned it a little bit earlier, um, is this we did, uh, the city did apply for a grant for Kansas Wildlife and Parks um, to improve or to develop an improved trail or water access point there. It's a $20,000 grant with a $20,000 match. Um, some of that match would be cash, um, so there's you know, money to be put into it. Some of it would be in-kind labor as far as um, employee hours and machine hours. Um, in, in that proposal, uh, we included a um, improving the roadway, um, so coming in and, and new gravel and then putting a chip seal surface that would kind of look like an asphalt road, wouldn't mm -hmm. quite be asphalt, as well as a parking area, uh, so an asphalt parking area, um, and better access down to the river. Um, so with some tree clearing. So you did that though, is that why you're more interested in leasing the property? Because if you use that money to improve the easement and just the road down there at the public access point on fourth. Yeah, so you would because that would be a public access point for any, yeah. anybody could go. But the grant you're talking about is to do the public access Correct. port right at the bridge and the easement road. So the public access would be, um, or what part yeah, I guess is what I'm asking. Is that basically for like the gates <coughs> and the Fourth Street access? There's a two lane path in front of the fence right now that mm -hmm. goes off of our driveway down to the Fourth Street Drive. Okay. Because you can't get off the fourth anymore. It's just too dangerous. So that particular fan, I guess I'm asking, is that even affect the lease proposal or the buy proposal if it's still public entry there under both options? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I can't bring my um, PowerPoint back up. So. The grant would not use the 4th Street access. So that 4th Street, the, the access point right along mm -hmm. the river is actually part of the county right away. So that's not city-owned property. Okay. Um, <coughs> city really has nothing to do with that. That's just the spot that's been established by people using it over the years. Okay. Um, city doesn't maintain it. We don't own it. Um, it's just, just like I said, something that's kind of happened over time. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, so... The grant actually looked at. Let me put that on the screen. Would be to develop a an access point on the city property, so up further north. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, point me in the direction yeah. that the grant is working. So in, on. in the grant in the proposal, we showed a parking lot kind of up in this area. Uh, so we, we would improve the roadway. Um, my pin just stuck. I love technology. All right. uh, so we would improve the roadway here all the way up to the fence. We, we put a fence across here because we still have to provide that access to the property mm -hmm. to the north. And then we put an improved parking lot somewhere generally in here. We could go in here. Could, so the grant um, money in the city improvement would go alongside the lease agreement with Nate's proposal. That's one of the options. That was one of the options I was going to throw out is, okay. is could we um, accept a grant, which I have not signed the grant agreement because mm -hmm. if the direction was to sell the property, I didn't want to accept the grant yeah. as well up in parks and then yeah. like, ah, sorry, we don't own the property. I would like anymore. to see how much it would cost, like yeah. how much <coughs> we could sell it for. So that's I mean, it'd be less, less for us to maintain if we sold it. Yeah, so, so that's one of the questions <laughs> I wanted to get, walk away from today is yeah. Is the interest just in selling it, letting it private, privately be developed, or working out some sort of agreement where you know, we work with Kansas Wildlife and Parks? Um, there's another nonprofit, um, Kansas Alliance of Wetlands and Streams. Um, we're very supportive of this site, as well as you know, a local group, whether it's trails or the snake run um, or whatever that is. <coughs> so it's it's kind of where where I'm struggling to, to move forward with this site. Is kind of figure out how to how to proceed. So. Well, Justin, we a year ago we uh, heard the uh, the overall master plan presentation yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. was very well received and very well done, and we've heard three fine presentations tonight this evening, and I appreciate uh, all of the the passion that these folks have. But I guess what I'm looking for is from you 
uh, to uh, assess uh, not only these presentations, but what really the master plan itself looks like, what its recommendations were, and what you would view as a model for a comprehensive development of the former water slide project. Uh, so we don't get involved in the individual selection of one versus another. I, I, I just don't want to do that. I don't think that's fair to anybody. But from us to hear from you as to a comprehensive master plan development with a, uh, a funding mechanism and the site control and your thinking on the site control, um, to really kind of put it back on you, Justin, uh, <laughs> to, to, re to really come to us with a, um, a, a recommendation that makes sense and is consistent with the master plan itself and addresses these three presentations in some form. Yeah. Um, Justin wants us to decide. Well, if we need to pick one, right? I, I don't necessarily no. want you to decide. No. We're, we're not deciding no, tonight, no, no matter what. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not asking no. for specific. Mm. Um, it, it's more, you know, if I come to you with, with a proposal from just one group, they're like two, two groups have a legitimate complaint right. that we didn't hear. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is their opportunity to speak and, and for you to kind of have have that conversation. But to address your question about the master plan, um, so access to water, um, ponds, streams, and rivers um, was very, very, very high. One of our top needs Good. Mm -hmm. is pu public access to water. Um, another thing, and actually the, the top um, recommendation for a new facility um, is to address what they call adventure sports. Um, Which would so be your BMX. Really targets those mm -hmm. um, mid teenagers and older young adults um, mm -hmm. to have some sort of activity with the perceived uh, risk involved. So it could be mountain biking, could be skateboarding. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so to me, um, to be more in line with the master plan, it would be a development of a public access site um, and then some sort of adventure sport around it. Um, in, in my opinion, is what's in line with. Okay. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I mean, this mm -hmm. has been very informative and very enlightening uh, as, as far as the multiplicity of, of the, mm -hmm. these different yeah. ideas and approaches. But we need to crystallize it in some ways to bring it into a manageable plan. Yeah. Uh, and whether it affects all three of these or uh, parts of each of them, as Sarah suggested. Uh, uh, that, that may be, be part of your, your recommendation, but I'm looking <coughs> to you for um, an ultimate recommendation. I well, would like to see it a single parcel, though. Mm -hmm. I want to see it like split up between all three groups. So I think w in order for me to proceed, one of the first questions we need to ask is, is do we want to keep ownership of the site and provide that free and public access to the, to the river? Or are we willing to sell it? Because that changes the conversation. What are your recommendations? Keep it. Based on the master plan, mm -hmm. it's to keep it. Okay. All right. I think that's. We, we need to listen to the professionals, and, and um, I would rely on your recommendation. And, and I would say not just the, the professionals, that was the community input that okay. Uh -huh. developed. That. Okay. I'd like to hear from the adjacent property owner before yeah. you speak. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have any other like prepared comments. So right. I'm kind of yeah. next spot where I'm just hoping to get some public input, and then hopefully we can get some direction. <coughs> from that. Okay, we will take public comments. Let's name and address, and okay. try to hold it to about five minutes. Oh, I've got it all listed out for you. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm Mark McKibben. My home address is 1310 East 6, and my future address is 4116 West 4th, which is... Whoops. whoops. <laughs> <laughs> we think we know. Back up the road. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 4116, which is right here. That's where my dog and our walkway and all of our developed area is. And before I go any further, I'd like to say that I'm really good friends with our canoe. Scott and Shorty are river rats just like I am. They're very respectful of the mm -hmm. area. And also, the CJ and the folks with SNEK, good friends of mine, have some of them insured. So I'm not here to poo-poo anybody's idea. 
I just want you guys to know the reality of this, okay? First of all, we bought that property in 1993, and it was on the bad loan list at the Bank of Kansas. After two different amusement type things, it uh -huh. folded, okay? And it is zoned residential right now. Not your area, but the rest of it is. And one of our main concerns is the security of our area. Right here where the, where the city line goes across the lake right here, mm -hmm. as you can see, that's about 10 inches deep. So how are we gonna keep people from swimming into deep water where we're liable for all of this area that's deep? Another thing is the condition of the roads out there right Tom now. Sanford. There's been no maintenance on them for years. My little brother, Stephen, and I have a 1929 road grader that you pull with a horse, and we work that road as much as we can. So, and one other point I'd like to make for you, that whole area is in a flood zone. Any permanent structures, mm -hmm. any fencing, has to meet FEMA standards, because I'm going through that right now, getting ready to build our cabin. And we spent eleven thousand dollars running two hundred and fifty feet of underground underground line to finally get electricity after twenty seven years. So it's very it's not cost effective. But and I have no no problems with somebody developing that area. But the fencing and the security of our area is a must. Uh -huh. I mean we've we've owned that for <coughs> twenty seven years now. We've mm -hmm. kept the fences up. We kept the gates up with the FOP guys. Mm -hmm. And I just don't see it doing anything except selling it. And we did uh, do a sealed bid on it twice in the past. One time when Francis was still here, so you know how long that was. And they didn't feel like it was enough, but we were the only bidders both mm -hmm. times. Okay, Mark, technically you're in the county, right? I'm sorry? You're technically in the county, oh, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. okay, actually, even though we own that. Okay, just yeah. wanted to make sure. So, you know, it's just the liability exposure and the security issues. And we provide public access when that gate's open up front, the FOP gate and ours. We've allowed people to come in and land, take off from inside the gate because the 4th Street Bridge is just dangerous anymore. I mean, there's glass and rebar, and so, you know, we've, we've done everything we can to help everybody, and I'm a huge canoeer, and I like goats, but I don't skateboard, <laughs> and I actually know about the, the bike trail there at Santa Fe Lake by Augusta, mm -hmm. and it's really a nice area, so, you know, it's encouraging to see the three proposals, but there's just some huge exposures that will need to be addressed. And I'd invite any of you to take a tour out there any time. I'd be happy to show you around because there's nobody that knows more about that area than myself. And there's been three major flooding events since 2007. And the one two years ago, completely right up here on this other bend, it's completely washed out now. And I mean, this road right here is gone, right up here. That's mm -hmm. all gone. And I called the uh, county flood manager, Corps of Engineers, River Authority, and they all told me just to soak my head. But so th there are some serious concerns north of us where if, if somebody doesn't help us do something with that, it's going to come through there and it's actually going to take that sewer lagoon out of there. So anytime somebody wants to drive out there and take a good look, I'll be happy to help you. Because get... really, it's something you need to see besides yeah. just looking at that. <clears throat> yeah. Because it's completely changed from what you're seeing there. And that way, you can kind of get an idea of the security concerns we have. And our liability is about $1,000 a year. We've had it since 1995. So, And I'll be happy to help any of you anytime just to take a look at it. OK, Mark, how would we get a hold of you? Uh, I'm at Salt City Insurance Agency, okay. 9 to 5. And it's 662-5404. And I'm five minutes from the lake. I'm right there on West 4th. Okay. I can take off at noon and go fish for 45 mm -hmm. minutes. 
and come back and I'm five minutes early. <laughs> okay. So gotcha. I'm kind of spoiled. Yeah. Gotcha. But I'd be happy to show it to you all anytime. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to comment at this point in time? Deborah? Good evening, Council. Um, Deborah Tufel with the Hutchinson Reno County Chamber of Commerce at 117 North Walnut. And I would just like to say that um, we're excited about the city finding common ground on activation of this location. I think it does have some great promise for economic development aspects um, of the community and undoubtedly outdoor spaces um, when they're properly activated can really be a great economic development driver um, outdoor activities as well but um, as a business organization I, I, I would like to say that we do need to really look at the economic development aspects and the return on investment and um, I like the aspect of of clean sale because it puts dollars back into the city coffers now um, but I think that there's something to be said for all of the presentations, so I won't weigh in on a preference, but um, I would just like you to think about the overall economic impact. I know you have some carrying costs for the site. I know you have some liability issues for the site, and you have a lot to think about with Mark's relationship with the proximity to the parcel as well. So um, I know Jackson is waiting on the phone, and... Uh, Anyway, I would just like to say that I appreciate you taking a close look at this so we can turn it into a site that brings new activity and visitors to the community in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, does Jackson want to talk? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, great. Very good. Um, I've been on mute the whole time, so hopefully you haven't heard me yet. So I, I just wanted to... Uh, echo part of Deborah's statement that we certainly support some sort of activity at that site. I think that it's a critical asset that is currently being underutilized and some sort of development is needed. Also don't want to necessarily weigh in on the, the different options. I haven't had the opportunity to speak with everybody here, but I did want to add just the, the thought that as an organization that wants to support startup startups, small businesses, and entrepreneurial endeavors, all of these would uh, fit those categories as far as we're concerned and we're willing to work with and help um, anyone and everyone who's involved in developing the site. And while some of our, some of our programs and resources are oriented solely towards businesses, um, we're certainly willing to talk to uh, and, and help in any way we can the nonprofit organizations who are interested as well. So uh, that's that's just my brief piece. Um, thanks for letting me listen in and look forward to seeing some activity at that site in the future. Thank you, Jackson. Uh, anyone else in the audience? Hi there. Um, my name is Jessica Mounts. I'm the executive director of the Kansas Alliance for Wetlands and Streams, and our office is located in Pratt, but my, um, the last two decades I've spent my entire career working on the Arkansas River. So I'm here tonight just to um, kind of advocate for the fact that we do have a national water trail. You, you have a national water trail in your community. Um, and uh, Scott talked a little bit about that earlier and what that means. Um, but, but mainly I want, I want you to know um, that you have a little bit of the last remaining wilderness in your community and um, you should um, appreciate and and support um, your community members and their access to that um, to that natural resource. Um, Kansas is 49th out of 50 as far as public lands available to people and so um, on a personal level I would say um, I would love to see this developed in more of a, um, a public access um, area. And that said, um, I've been involved with the, with the designation of the National Water Trail as a paddling trail um, in Kansas since, um, since the very beginning. Um, and we currently, um, the, the, the nonprofit, the Kansas Alliance for Wetlands and Streams, we're a 501c3 um, that I work for right now. We currently have a grant from the Kansas Trails Council to um, place informational and public signage along the trail. Um, along the okay. entirety of the trail, which runs from Great Bend to the Oklahoma border. So we'll be reaching out to the city and working with Justin very soon about um, 
um, you know, the types of signage and the types of information that needs to be included at the sites that are here in Wichita, but, or in Hutchinson, and some in Wichita. Mm -hmm. um, so um, anyway, I just wanted you guys to, to know that we're working on, um, on, the, on the bigger, on the grander scale as far as the um, river trail goes. We just hired a coordinator for that project. Her, she is on the, um, on the phone. She wasn't able to be here tonight, but her name is Rebecca Sellers. And so um, she'll be reaching out um, very soon to talk about, um, you know, signage needs and that kind of stuff. So okay. um, I, I just am really glad that your community is looking at this as a site. And I know I've been out there a couple times now. So. Okay. Yeah. And just Thank to you. clarify, that's a separate grant from the grant I spoke of yeah. earlier. So they have, oh, they have yeah. their grant yeah. and then the city <clears> has <throat> offered a separate grant for, yeah, for improvements to the site. Yeah, okay. the grant that the grant that I'm talking about is um, the entire trail, and it's about it's about a half million dollar project. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So. Jeff, do you have anything? Nothing further. Thank you guys very much. No formal action arising from this meeting tonight, but uh, great dialogue. Thank you all. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, it's a cool place. I mean, it really it really is. Yeah. The whole area is just fabulous, and, and public access. I think it's a huge issue for I think it could be platted out just because you guys need to keep the sewer lagoon. Just plat mm -hmm. the sewer lagoon area out of there and put it up for sealed bid. That gets you out from under. <laughs> what do you mean uh, plat the lagoon out? Well, the lagoon area, the sewer lagoon area. Uh -huh. You'd want to make sure that was, you know, always. You need to, yeah. You had you, had you had to keep that part of the city yeah. anyway because of the Thumb mm -hmm. Valley. Okay, guys. Cool. But did we have a consensus on whether we wanted to lease or sell? I don't think we can make that consensus tonight. I think we all kind of need to think about okay. this and digest yeah. it a little bit more. And I think we need to have Justin we'll come back Justin. with the, the master plan yep. correlation and, and go from there. Um, I'm I'm vacillating what would you see as a reasonable time frame that you <clears throat> need or want to come back so we can revisit this um you know i still think there's so many questions sure. questions out there about ownership is, is kind mm -hmm. of the first one it's hard for me to progress and come back with anything um you know with a little bit more meat to it um until i think we we, we i have more direction on that um because I, i'm hearing that they were open to both options of selling mm -hmm. it or, or or keeping it and developing it either in partnership or solely um you know i can is it, is it your am i correct is it your recommendation to continue to own the property it is my recommendation yeah and and if we're comfortable at least for now with with keeping that direction and use that as a then, premise then that gets me at least one question answered that I Fine. can start working on some details as yeah. far as how the rest of the site could go. That, okay. Um, because again, it, it was hard for me to come to you with either a sell mm -hmm. or a right. lease agreement because I would leave somebody out at that point who's who's shown very a lot right. of interest in the group in the site. So, with the lease agreement, I know this is like let's say if we go to the lease agreement versus selling. Um, I mean, if how do we know we don't get left though? Like, cause if they're just leasing it and they put all this stuff on there and then they decide they don't want to operate anymore and then what, we're just left with all the junk that's on there? Or? Uh, potentially if they go out of business, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep that, that would be one risk. I mean, we have mm -hmm. that with um, Extreme Crossfire, the paintball group, and um, the archery group, Salt Hawk Ar Archery, they have a lease from us as well. So. I know we're not here to make a definitive decision, but <clears throat> Give us the benefit of your thinking as to why we should retain ownership. Um, it goes back to just the public access point and, and, and keeping that access available to the general public. That was one of the top recommendations that came out of the master plan, which mm -hmm. you know, included that um, statistically valid survey of the of the residents of Hutchinson. You know, that was, yeah. that was what they said was they wanted public access to the river, um, and this is our best spot to do it okay. um, to develop that. You know, this is really. Um, you know, as Jessica kind of pointed out, this is a, a great location we have on this really untapped resource. And um, Scott and Michelle would do a fantastic job. I'm sure, sure. they would. Um, mm -hmm. It would be a great site. It would be a great addition to the community. But my, my concern the whole time is, is a public access piece. 
we still haven't addressed that. And, and mm -hmm. by selling it, um, it makes it very much more difficult to provide that to the community. We'd have to find another site. So, um, that's my biggest justification for recommending remaining owners. Of the and we don't have any other public site like near Cary Park or anything like that? Um, so yeah, Cary Park, the issue with Cary Park is we have the levee, um, mm -hmm. which Scott is very familiar yeah. <laughs> with yeah. the levee, yeah. mm -hmm. because you have to hike up and over and carry yeah. um, uh, you know, the, the boats up and over that mm -hmm. levee every time you are. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually wasn't considered a primary site for the, the uh, mm -hmm. yeah. because of its kind of nasty pay gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's 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 yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is that takes the group and operator and give it probably the most used access point yeah. on the water trail. Yeah. And I think the entire water trail. And it's trail. nice to have a start and a finish, you know, <laughs> in yeah. one community. If you just have one access site, then especially because there's a big blank area that's being touched in Wichita right now. There's like a 50 mile float from Hutch to Wichita. If you get in at 4th Street and go to Cary, that's at least a, you know, a quick way to get into your family. You can't get off like at Haven or? Yeah, we, well, yeah. 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 but from Hutch to Haven, that's a two day. Okay. 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 <coughs> Done it many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, you wanna? No, I, I I agree with everybody that public access to the river there is huge, and it should really be something that is a must. Yeah. yeah. And and hi, I'm Jeff Conley. I'm with the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks and Tourism. I'm a I, I, I do fisheries programs programming stuff, but I I'm also in charge of of the Arc River access mm -hmm. things to the par department. And one of the things that we are in goal of with in conjunction with the National Water Trail is to connect all these communities. And so, you know, say we get Sterling access, we get, you know, Nickerson. Nickerson, you know, we, that way we can connect the dots and this comes much bigger for guys like Scott, you know, and that's, and that's what we're, that's my goal as is running my program is to try to foster that. And that was one with the, the grant that we offered to uh, the guys it is a grant in hopes of doing that in other communities. So this yeah. is kind of a primer as well for that to show that this can happen and that we can move up through the watershed and get more access points in the upper part and keep working on the lower part, so. Okay. So would you want to bring this back to formal action then at some point? Yeah, I, th I think at some mm -hmm. point. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I feel like I have, have some, a pretty solid mm -hmm. um, direction as far as moving forward and, and can bring um, bring something back a little bit more formal. Okay. Um, so. Real quick, Jason, I, this is going in my mind. That sewer canal that's there, whatever you call that sewer thing. Yep. That's for Fun Valley. That's for them, right? Fun Valley and also the Nickerson administration building feeds into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so regardless so, of what we do at that site, we're always going to maintain that. Absolutely. Yeah. So the city of Hutch, we maintain that, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, if there are no further comments, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the evening. Thank you all for coming and doing your presentations. And we've got a lot to think about. Good night. Nice job. Mm -hmm.